Hey guys, welcome back to The Artistic Recovery. I'm Josh. I'm a recovery advocate on the Artistic Recovery team, so welcome. And today we're going to be talking about how your story can fit into art. Uh, we all have that desire deep inside of us to want to feel seen, heard, and understood. And a lot of the time, we have traumas that we may not even be realizing that we do carry with us in our memory and in our thoughts. So today we're going to be talking about art with local artist Brendan Burkott. Am I saying that correctly? You are, yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Good. Brendan has graciously provided his artwork for us today. We're going to be talking about his story, going deeper into the thoughts and actual challenge of how to become an artist today by just beginning to open up the creative process. There's lots of things to cover today, Brendan. We're just going to jump right in. Thank you again for being here. Yeah, of course. I'm and uh, happy to be here. Which, uh, which painting is your favorite, just, just, by, just by looking? Because those listening on the podcast today may not realize what we have in front of us. We have a series of four pictures, all of different celebrities. Brendan, take it away. Um, wow, that's like trying to ask somebody who their favorite kid is, isn't it? Um, right, right. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, they all mean something differently. Um, I, I like portraits a lot, but uh, the Eminem one, I think, is kind of hits different i like the black and white and just mm. the uh the style i used on mm. that one but uh mm. yeah i mean they're all good they all tell their own story um i use uh spokespersons for recovery in all of the pieces so that is the general theme um but yeah as far as paintings go eminem for sure but as far as like the most inspirational like person mm. i think robert downey kind of Mm-hmm. is like yeah yeah just yeah. another level for sure yeah, absolutely for sure so not just um his story and mm-hmm. his being able to overcome obstacles but mm-hmm. like he has some really good quotes and stuff too it's mm-hmm. like a pretty good person to emulate so related to recovery um as an artist um you have a favorite go-to is that is that going to be what we've just talked about Robert Downey Jr. as an advocate for recovery? As far as like inspiration. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's tough to, um, I mean, unfortunately for the um, artists, as far as like painting and, and drawing and stuff, there is, you know, that's not the easiest. Um, there's not a big advocate that's like popular. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's hard to like, you know, judge. Like if I, if I were to say an artist, a lot of people don't even know who they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. most, most of the, the fame and fortune comes uh, after they pass, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But um, as far as like active spokespeople in recovery, I think Robert mm-hmm. Downey Jr. is like, yeah. yeah, you can't not like him. You For know? sure. And it's such For a sure. great story of just overcoming obstacles. So That's really good. That's really good. So I, we're just going to jump right in because I think that's the best way as an artist – you know, what are some ways of how you insert your own story into your art? Um, you know, how do you insert your story into art? Obviously, it's a picture of another person. So it's not like these are self-portraits, but in a way, is your art a self-portrait of who you are? Um, yeah, so the the good thing about art is is it's kind of um, an escape for real- from reality, and it also kind of lets you perceive... Um, a future that you know you didn't that wasn't initially there mm. so you kind of have um free range and it's really um it's it's almost like meditation in mm-hmm. a sense of mm-hmm. just escaping reality and creating a new future so mm. i've always enjoyed it it was mm. It was, I was like helping myself with anxiety and trauma, not even realizing it by doing (laughs) artwork, like subconsciously, you know, Mm -hmm. and then now it's like, I can feel when I don't, you know, like if you're just like, you miss a day working out or you eat something unhealthy or something, it's like you can tell in your body. That's how I am with artwork too. So, um, but yeah, I mean, they all kind of tell their own story, um, mm. and how I feel that day too. You can kind of tell by uh, <laughs> what outlet I used or whatever. But um, mm. it's always it, it it always helps, and I like portraits too. 
they help me because I know when I'm done, you know? Sure, <laughs> like if, sure. it's, if I do a different genre or a different abstract piece or something like that, I swear. Like, I will start it one day with, you know, whatever emotion I'm trying to, like, release onto the canvas. Uh-huh. And then I'll go back to it another day in a completely different mood and I'll end up, like, painting over everything <laughs> I did. So it's like, <laughs> portraits make it easy for me. It's yeah. like, all right, it looks like them, I'm done. So, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, so as an artist, obviously... It it's not like it's not like you typecast yourself as this kind of an artist, or do you in a way say that I am this kind of an artist because this is my story, or could your art change? Could you be doing clay? Yeah, another day or a- absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and it it's more about just you know setting the time out of your day and doing the action and just being creative. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, we're all artists. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just about tapping into it and using mm-hmm. that as an outlet. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, the the difference between an artist and a professional artist is a professional artist is just someone who gets paid to do it. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, we're all artists in a way. You know, mm-hmm. it's just about um, being a little more subconscious about it and, uh, you know, trying to just use it as an outlet, mm-hmm. I think, um, which I would recommend to anybody so, at any level. That's good. How, Brendan, have you actually seen other artists, whether local, national, global, actually talking about their recovery through art in um, some way? Like, I can't think of a general, um, like, poster child, if you will, for that, yeah. uh, unfortunately. But I'm sure they're out there. Like, mm. I wish, um, you know, I mean, we can all have a, a wish list but you know i do still have um a full-time career outside of art so it's like it's hard mm. for me to like i wish that you know more hours in the day type, yeah type stuff yeah but, definitely uh, yeah i mean i would um i'm not familiar but i know as far mm-hmm. as acting and musicians go i mean for you sure know, pick your point yeah yeah so there's there's plenty so which i think is important uh because whether we do have that platform of influence but this is also a platform of influence too. Absolutely, you and, know, and so, th- it's yeah. all about what your art is. You know, whatever your mm. craft may be. Mm. So um, yeah, I've been. You know, I, I, we all have been influenced by uh, music and acting subconsciously mm-hmm. our entire lives. So yeah. I feel like more so than than the general population has from artwork. Yeah. Um. So and that's just kind of the the culture we live in now. Mm-hmm. You know, but. Yeah. Um, as far as that's concerned, I just think like, mm. yeah, I mean, it, outside of like Banksy and stuff like that, right. you know, there's right. not like a huge right. like, yeah, living yeah. population of artists that are like, yeah. you know, in a household name. Type mm-hmm. stuff, so. Yeah, definitely. Of course, Banksy is known for being kind of incognito yeah. and showing up and just making his name known. Absolutely. By his art. That's yeah. his style. And I think yeah. that that is kind of why there is a lot more fame. It's not just the message, which is amazing also, but yeah. just kind of the allure of like, yeah. you know, the yeah. unknown and stuff like that. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in terms of where you're at today in your art versus where you started, has there been a mentor or somebody who has helped you as an artist that you can point back to and be like, that person may not realize it they may not even know where i'm at in life right now but like i can look to that person and be like it could be a teacher it could be it could be a youtuber it could be anybody you know sure that, that has helped you encouraged you in that way um i mean i feel like every encounter we have with people in our lives have kind of you know in some way subconsciously like helped Mm-hmm. mold us in a way mm-hmm. i mean i had some really great art teachers in um in high school for uh, one year anyway i went to a uh, public school one year out of the four years of high school and i did like all art elective classes and that was like, uh-huh. really entertaining so cool. shout out to uh <laughs> mr van zant uh i called him john claude van zant so uh-huh. gotta laugh about a quarter uh-huh. of a time <laughs> Um, but he was great. I did ceramics, advanced ceramics, cartooning, drawing, um, all of his classes and, and just to be off, be mm. able to be offered that, um, yeah. 
was was neat but uh that's cool yeah i mean my mother obviously like is a big influence on me mm-hmm. and she um is very creative and mm-hmm. and always did stuff and she like always gave me i guess the uh, like provided me with outlets to to do my artwork on because i have yeah. been drawing ever since i was nice yeah i think i did that before i wrote so okay <laughs> so there's different forms of creative expression that you have um, cause what I heard is there's writing too, that you enjoy as an artist. Yeah. Who is that? Um, Carl Jung said, mm-hmm. until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life. And That's you really will call cool. it fate. Oh, which, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That is interesting. Now, who is that? Uh, for those that don't know his name again, who said that quote? Oh, Carl yeah. Jung. Yeah. So yeah. And the quote again is until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Mm-hmm. which is like such a, a deep quote on many levels. So <laughs> it's not just um, the first part, obviously, that making the unconscious conscious, but um, mm-hmm. it will direct your life and, and you'll call it fate. And it's mm-hmm. like all about kind of like, which I would consider the unconscious, just like our inner self, our our trauma, the you know mm-hmm. stuff we just carry around with us mm-hmm. that um, we don't realize how much it, it develops our decision making yeah. and all kinds of stuff like that. And um, just kind of releasing that uh, just kind of is empowering, mm-hmm. you know? So, which could be writing, painting, clay, ceramics. Absolutely. Singing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, wow, that's awesome. So, I think if we go into this area that maybe some of us aren't comfortable talking about, it's the negative past experiences, traumas. So as an artist, let's say someone's just picking up the paintbrush for the first time. Right. No idea that they even have these things in their memory or in their past. But as an artist, it's important to recognize that there are many different influences to our art. Many different ones. So if someone doesn't realize that they have a colorful history, how would you encourage someone to still use art to tell their story? Just encouragement. And it's not as much about like... You know, I, it sounds like um, you are almost like illustrating a book when they think about telling your story through uh-huh. your artwork. And uh-huh. that's not exactly what, um, I mean, that's kind of the image that comes to mind for me, like before yeah. I really started, you know, outletting. Um, but it's not as much that as just mm-hmm. kind of the, the process of just sitting down and using your mind and being, um, creative. Uh, Mm. so there's like some, um, I did like a, an essay on, um, the art expression that helps recovery. And, Mm. uh, it's, there's just some really good stuff that I like just kind of researched and found out about it. And, um, Mm. Like what? Uh, like what did you find out? Well, like art can help you um, imagine a more hopeful future in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so our brains predict our uh, predictive machines, and um, it likes to make um, predictions on what we do next and um, what we need to do to survive and thrive. Right. Well, um, when you're doing artwork, you're making a series of decisions subconsciously. Mm. So it kind of takes that power away from your like mm. just predictability. So, interesting. Yeah. So that is really interesting. So it could be painting. It could be something as simple as doing a collage, like a paper collage, where you're just tearing pieces of magazine pictures apart and just gluing them to a canvas. Like yeah. there's an unpredictability of like what's going to be next when I flip open my this book and I'm trying to put together a picture here. Yeah, so absolutely. It's therapeutic just to be freeing for the mind. Cause, yeah. Well, and yeah. It, it, it helps you... Um, like more or less imagine possibilities and see a future like beyond Mm. the present moment. Because Mm. when you are like getting the utensils, picking the canvas, picking out like whatever, um, you know, you want to use to create whatever it may may be, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're preparing for something, you're envisioning it. And it, that alone just kind of takes you out of the the Mm -hmm. general just moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, just imagine possibilities. Um, yeah. And that, like, 
as far as a long term effect can kind of get you out of that that gloom because yeah. I know like it, right when you're getting out of active addiction, I mean it's tough to first off imagine a future period and then mm-hmm. let alone one that would have a bright possibility uh, you know attached wow. to it. So mm. um and whether it is something that you're envisioning that might be dark at the time, at least you're just getting that out and putting it on yeah. canvas instead of just keeping that bottled up. You yeah, know? that's so good. There's it's got um I mean, obviously more benefits than less. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right, though, because obviously in, re- in recovery, I mean, just based on, you know, personal experience, um, you know, what we can feel or experience or understand almost is just so locked into how we are feeling each day. And most of the time, if we're caught up in addiction, um, if some sort of uh, addictive behavior, it's all about what I need to get done that day. Yeah. And most often I'm prioritizing maybe the addiction or the um, control of something else. As an artist, there's this, let's let's release control and let's put something else in front of us, which is this ability to express ourselves. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And like in doing so, it kind of helps um, release like the reward pathways in your yeah. brain and stuff like that, which are usually pretty desolate at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, so, yeah. Um, that's always helpful and just kind of making things a little more optimistic and um mm-hmm. and that's just like the scientific part like you know mm-hmm. like that's all like i i know just like sounds like a different language at sometimes but um i feel like just getting out there and making the effort and doing it you'll feel the immediate just sensation of what's cool re- how rewarding it can be that is cool Definitely, if people take notice of the art as well, have you had good reception for your art? I mean, locally, do you do anything like online through YouTube or anything of that nature? Yeah, and you know what? I have like one of the best problems an artist can have is usually every time before I do a piece, it's usually sold. Um, (laughs) Because I'll post something like one of these on my Instagram or Facebook Mm -hmm. and I'll immediately get like four other like, you know, contracted pieces to do for somebody. So, it's mainly for me now is just like not biting off more than I can chew. And yeah. I'm trying to release anxiety, not create yeah. more. So, yeah. you know, like, right. and, and that's always been a complex too, is, is just, um, mm. taking out the authenticity of your artwork by, you know, making it, uh, a mm. nine to five, if you will, mm. you know, I mean, cause then you're, yeah. it's not as much about what you are doing. It's for yeah. someone else. So mm. trying to remain, um, just, yeah, like authentic and mm. doing what you like to do, I think is more important than just the reward of yeah. a payment for something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That is so. cool. Yeah. Cause it's almost like that. Do I want to have a factory mentality? Yeah. Or am I just like, you know, throwing out art just for the sake of it? You know what, like you said, that reward pathway. So like, what is the goal for as an artist, as we're in this moment today, like what is your goal with your art? Like, obviously, it's taking you to a place here. So what's that next step look like for you as an artist? Have you thought about that? Um, I mean, if nobody saw my art, it wouldn't really bother me that much. You know, Mm -hmm. like, it's, I, of course, like, the biggest compliment is, like, having one of your pieces in someone else's house and them walking past it and getting a reaction out of it. Every day. Constantly, every day. Like, that's, like more important to me than like mm-hmm. if that funded a bill I needed or anything like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But um just for what it does for me and myself, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, I could paint something on a canvas and get it out there, really appreciate it and then paint over it a month later. And that's not mm-hmm. going to upset me mm-hmm. as much as just the process of doing mm-hmm. it, you know? Yeah. So that's like another thing is too, is it's like so many people like are like, like, just worried about if the where their skill set is and mm. if it's like I'm not good enough at painting I this isn't going anywhere mm-hmm. like it, but it's not even just about like the finished product as much as just getting there you know yeah so it's interesting so it connects it get, art can connect you to another person absolutely because we're not going to be in that person's house every single day right but that artwork is so then in a way it's an extension of who you are yeah it, somehow yeah yeah and and it's like i said it's really the process i mean like a hobby you know is is important to have and it's important to find out who you are what 
you like to do, you know, kind of mm-hmm. filling that void mm-hmm. that uh, mm-hmm. addiction left, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and then if it's beneficial to your health at the same time, then obviously right. that's great, you yeah. know. Yeah. But I feel like if someone like let's say they enjoy going on hikes and like nature and all that, like, I, is it? Do you think that it's more rewarding to them to show pictures of people about the hike they went on or just doing the hike themselves? Mm, you know, probably I, going on the hike. I would imagine, yeah. you know, yeah. I, if you're doing it. Yeah, and that's another, like, I, I mean, yeah, if you want to talk about problems in the world today, but just kind of mm-hmm. this whole Instagram lifestyle of sure. just doing things for the entertainment of other people. Right. And, and it's, right. you know, living your life for them. And it's like, that is no way to live. So. I would uh, I would recommend just doing artwork for yourself as like wow. the goal, and if mm. it is enjoyed by other people, that's just you know mm-hmm. the icing on the cake. But think about that too. I think you said a great something great there, Brendan. It's like the Mona Lisa, or you know what what's another great example? But you know the Passover. You know another another great example as well. These pictures in time. They didn't have social media to go to, to yeah, to capture that and to say hey like this. Man, they were going to put all themselves into that piece of art. Absolutely. And the rest is history. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so maybe there's this way of like, do we do a disservice to ourselves as an artist if we're just all about, you know, trying to get other people to like who we are as opposed to being like, no, this is who I am. This yeah. is what I'm about. You yeah. You know? So. And, you know, and, and that's another thing is too is it's like, obviously, if you want to do like an art piece and it's for someone and that person, yeah. then that's great. Obviously, yeah. that is a huge reason to do something. And it's yeah. genuine. And yeah. it, if it is genuine and sincere, yeah. you know, yeah. because like that was artists like they they weren't expecting there to be an art museum with their art pieces in it 200 <laughs> right. years later for right. everyone to come and see. Right. And to you know, advertise it and plug it and try and right. get the biggest audience. You know, they, yeah. it was for whoever bought that and they had that mm-hmm. and that was in their house. So yeah. that is like something else also is That's like it, you don't mm-hmm. need to be trending for it to be like, you know, to powerful and right. means meaningful. Right. So it just That's cool. to appeal to the masses isn't, you know, mm-hmm. the, the goal. As an artist, is that an, ado- an adoptive philosophy that you have in a way? Is just be like, I don't have to be trending. Yeah, you know, this is who I absolutely. Am, you know? Yeah, yeah, and and that's a whole other thing is too is is just um, you know living off of the uh, approval of other people is is mm-hmm. not a good way to live, um, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it, it's just one of those things that you got to do for yourself and and not for you know gratification of someone else, it, yeah. it, and that's anything in life. I feel yeah. like you know yeah for I, sure. So that's good. That's really good. Yeah, as an artist, do you have any favorite art pieces? Anything? It doesn't have to be, of course, what we're looking at currently in the room, but it certainly could be. Um, what inspires you about the art that you enjoy? Um, it could be portrait. Could be a different style of art. Yeah. Could be writing like a specific uh, author. Because that's yeah. art too. I think we've identified that as art as well. You know, so... Really, what would inspire you if you were to walk into a room of your favorite art? What would be something that you really enjoy? Um, yeah. Anything by Claude Monet. I, I, I absolutely love Monet. And I just find it like when, you know, I so I love like the past and just seeing like the hurdles that other artists before me have crossed and just like creating an entire genre. Like how yeah. that's wild to me yeah. to just be like, someone I'm sure was like, no, you're doing it wrong. And it's like, no, this is what I, this <laughs> yeah. is you know, like with just yeah. different brush strokes or impressionism right. as right. opposed to just landscapes and stuff like that. And right. it's like, that is so like groundbreaking to me that That's someone cool. was able to do something like that. So he's definitely top of my list for sure. Claude Monet. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And Van Gogh's up there. Um, yep. Absolutely. Same kind of like genre and styles and just like, Mm-hmm. I, you know, I wish he, his ending was a little more happier, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, you want to talk about undiagnosed trauma mm. and, uh, mm. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, wow. some of us don't have the chance to get to the path of recovery, but, mm. um, yeah, I, I definitely think it's, uh, 
it's a good thing to do and mm. and to kind of just research i'll go to any art museum i can if if there's yeah. one in the area i'll yeah. find it and i'll go that's cool um that's cool. and that's just a way to just dive inspiration and and just get a different you know look into someone else's perspective mm -hmm. you know i mean how fun is that to yeah. just kind of be able to put their shoes on for a little while i feel like mm. um but yeah monet is definitely uh Top of my Monet list and Van sure. Gogh. When you say recovery, and when we talk about your own shoes, do you have a story of recovery that you could somehow tie in to today's podcast and conversation? Um, I mean, yeah, like you know? I'm not, I don't really shy away from it. I at first it was obviously like, like it's it's tough when you um like there's so many different stages to recovery, you know, like, mm -hmm. and in the beginning, it's like, you're very skittish of just identifying as someone in recovery, or, you know, the fact that um, you were uh, an alcoholic, an addict, anything like that, mm -hmm. just because it's like, you're still kind of living in that skin of mm -hmm. the past, you mm -hmm. know, and it's hard mm -hmm. to shed that. Um, so it's like, that's just something that you don't want to identify as, you know? And obviously I'm not saying like now I'm going to like put it on my resume or anything, but I think it does absolutely have a lot of, uh, it defines who I am, you know, mm. because I feel like you almost get three lives, um, with addiction and it's, mm. it's your life beforehand, your life in active addiction, and then mm. your life after. And like, oh. what a way to have perspective. Yeah, I mean, you have well. three different angles of looking at everything and, um, I mean, just the strength to overcome something like that, that in that time you would never thought you were going to be able to. is just mm -hmm. phenomenal. Um, mm. But, well, yeah, I mean, I, um, I'm i not, like, afraid of, uh, of confronting it anymore mm -hmm. or talking about it like I was just because I'm, that's not who I am anymore. Yeah. And once you're, like, completely subconsciously know that that is just a piece of your past and mm -hmm. it's not a part of your present or future, mm -hmm. then it's a lot easier to talk about, I feel yeah. like. so. Yeah. So, Brenda, I was hoping we could just deep dive for a second into this topic of shame. And if there's anybody listening that's like, man, I'm dealing with that right now and I want to be free of that, what does that look like for you or what advice can you provide for that? Um. So, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Because uh, shame is... I would say it's just comes along with um, the process of recovery um, because you're living in it in active addiction um, because, you know, it's kind of this internal battle of who you are and, you know, all of your decisions are based around your addiction usually. So um, that's who you identify as. That's who you are. That's who you surrounded yourself with. Um, and you kind of push away your loved ones and all that because – you know, people that want to worry about you, that's a buzzkill. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> right. so then, you know, once you remove the substance and you, and you start your path mm -hmm. to recovery, you're still identify as an addict or an alcoholic or whatever your vice might be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's just who you identify as. And, and it you spent X amount of years just kind of rewiring your body and your mm -hmm. brain and your thought process to just mm. revolving around whatever that mm. vice was. So, mm. um, that's just who you identify as. And you, as you progress in recovery, you'll realize that that was just like a temporary cloak you were wearing. Um, you continue to do the next right thing. You just, you know, stay true to yourself. You change your surroundings, your people, places, and things, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're, Friendships are based around it, whatever the drug of choice is, and you're not doing that anymore. That friendship is pretty much deceased. So yeah. then you're, you know, kind of feel lost and mm. uh, you don't know who you are. So all there is is just the, the rubble that is left of your life. Mm. And that's another big thing is, too, is, is people expect things to just change overnight and it, it's not going to. Mm. But... Um, as you continue in recovery, you know, you start identifying as who you actually are. And that shame kind of goes away once you realize that that's just a part of your past and not your mm. future anymore and your mm. present. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of a temporary setback. But it it's all too real. And it, mm. and it will happen, unfortunately. And it's normal. It's just mm. kind of um, getting over that hurdle. 
And that was something that I had to deal with too. And now I'm like, you know, obviously doing a podcast about, you know, my addiction and who I am and not just trying to talk about my artwork, but also just, you know, the road that led me to my artwork because Mm. that is a part of my past. And I was able to kind of own that. Um, Because, you know, we all have, like I said, three lives in in addiction and it's the one before uh, active addiction, Mm. the one during and the one after. Mm, and uh yeah yeah, that kind of helps with your perspective and your self-esteem and all kinds of stuff like that so um it's not something that you just kind of identify as anymore it's just a a part of your journey Mm. well thank you for sharing that as well because i think that's important you know uh, whether you're a musician whether you're um trying painting for the first time, checking out this video because it said something about art and creativity and recovery. Yeah. Just to be able to say, I'm going to take that first step today to open up my story and to be able to be like, you know what? It's it's almost like it's an asset to have your recovery story. It's not a liability yeah. to have that. Absolutely. And so it's going to help you as an artist to move forward, whether you want to write a book, whether you do want to create an awesome work of art this is going to take some time not Mm. that you can't do that but like this is going to take some time was there a defining moment for you brendan that you were like this i know for a fact that i am an artist because i made this painting really rock like Uh, um so i've always been like drawing painting all that and then in high school once i was around more of my peers and other people and i realized my skill set was a little higher than them Mm -hmm. and it was like oh okay well that's kind of you know, and just the fact that I would do it not even for other people's approval or anything like that. I just like mm-hmm. to, to do art. And then once yeah. you do feel that reward sensor, it's like, all right, well, now I know I'm good at it too. <laughs> right. Um, right. And then that just kind of carried into college. And I did art as, like in college as well, um, as long as some engineering and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, it was something that I was going to do no matter what, mm-hmm. you know. And um, it was it's a tough thing to try and make a career out of unless you really know what you want to do. And Mm. sometimes like I did some graphic design and I felt like that just kind of took the creativity out of it. You know, it was more about who knew the software as opposed to who had like an artistic Mm -hmm. uh, vision and stuff like that. Sure. Um, Mm. But I, and then, you know, once I was in, um, once I started recovery I was very skittish to get into my artwork again because it was, um, you know, one of my, I was using it as an outlet while I was in active addiction also. So then it was kind of like having to, that was almost a trigger for me, if you will, um, of just, you know, something that I would subconsciously do also Mm -hmm. in active addiction. So kind of getting back to that. And then now I just feel like it's, I've excelled so much more Mm. since then and having a clear mind and not thinking I needed uh, to alter my mentality or my, you know, Mm -hmm. use a substance Mm -hmm. to be creative. Yeah. Um, I felt like that almost hindered me more now, like looking back on things than it did help accelerate my creativity. Isn't that interesting? The passion was still there, but it was almost like we felt like we needed something else to hyper-focus and get this done. But once we remove that, it's like the art was still there, but I've replaced it with better life, better life. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's it's wild because like like addiction isn't the primary problem. Like it's an attempt to solve a problem. And mm. I think that's a misconception for a lot of people is is mm. um, mm-hmm. the the it's whatever you're trying to escape by de- doing that, you mm-hmm. know, because mm-hmm. um, Like trauma isn't what happens to you. It's like what happens inside you. You know, it's like Mm. one defining moment can just continuously have a ripple effect throughout the rest of your life. So it's like diving into that, peeling that onion back and finding Mm. out who you are is more important than any of it. Um, Mm. And like recovery is to find again, you know, Mm. that's so how neat is that? You know, like you find yourself. (laughs) And we just do so many things, I feel like, that are just not authentic for other people's um, approval or Mm. whatever. And you don't really, we lose self of our authenticity. Yeah, that's interesting. And I feel like I've found that through recovery. And now it's just like, Mm. just, you. I mean, you're deeper on a spiritual level and all that. And 
using art has been a great way to kind of use that as a portal to kind of get that out. So, How cool. Where can people find you if they want to connect social media, Instagram? Would that be a great way to connect um, with you? Yeah, yeah, I'm on Instagram at Classic Brendo. Um, and then um, Facebook also at Brendan Burkai. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens after this. Yeah. But, um, one day, um, one day to time. Right, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah ain't that the truth? Wow. So. so, lastly, I know we talked about a lot today. Um, your community today is it richer than it was in active addiction? Absolutely, yep. and it's it's wild because I grew up in um, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and uh, mm-hmm. I am not around any of the, like you know, the, the people that influenced my childhood, my, you know, um, coming to age years, all that. Mm -hmm. But, um, I'm, I feel like I'm more in tune with my community than I was the one Mm -hmm. I grew up in and Mm -hmm. spend the most of my developmental years. So, uh, that's just something that another gift recovery has given me, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but perspective is a lot of it too. So. And would you say art and drawing and painting has helped open up the perspective in a way just because it's given you a focus, but it's, you know, obviously not in the heightened addictive phase that we've experienced in the past. Yeah. So now it's, it's helped with that perspective because this is a portrait of time. Obviously this took time and it was, you know, your story, yourself put into that art. So in a way art is helping us kind of go back to, you know, the right hemisphere of the brain is that creative space. And yeah. so that's like visual memory coming back and all these things like scientifically as we've talked about. Yeah. Um, so, but perspective, is, it sounds like perspective is something that has increased in your recovery journey as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like that's, um, I, that's needed for anyone, um, period, but especially in recovery. Because, you know, I mean, we just want to entice like drugs and alcohol with it but i mean we all have different ways of outletting emotions Mm -hmm. and usually it's because of our perspective of something that is what's bothering us so it's not as much you know it's letting other people affect our serenity Mm. you know and that's what i've had the most success at working on you know it's like if i go outside barefoot and I walk on the ground and it hurts my feet. It's like, am I going to either cover the whole world in pillows or put shoes on, you know? So it's like, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll put the shoes on and I will work on myself rather than making everyone else change for me. Wow. And art has definitely helped me just work on myself. You wow. Know? So that's so good. Cause it, it takes a level of courage to put yourself out there, you know, and that, that pillow illustration could be, I'm just not going to do art like this. If I mess up on a painting like this, I'm just going to stick to something I know. And that's stick figures, man. Like, I'm just going right. to do stick figures. Right. You know, so, Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's just getting out of your comfort um, level is important, I feel like, for mm-hmm. anybody. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, um, it's just, you know, doing something that makes you uncomfortable or uh, something new is just great for growth. I mean, you can't mm-hmm. have growth without uncomfort. So yeah. it's just, uh, yeah, I feel like it's, but it, do it for yourself yeah. and, and you're going to have success in it yeah. because it, that's, if you keep, you know, what the, the purpose of it genuine, then yeah. I feel like that's when you get the rewards. That's awesome. Wow. So in conclusion today, I know we've talked about a lot of moving elements in the sphere of art and recovery. There's a lot of pathways that we can choose uh, when we're beginning our recovery journey for the first time or if we've been in it for 30 plus years. Today, we've talked about a lot. Um, We want to challenge you today. We want to begin to take a look at what it means to begin this first step. Um, So today, um, make a commitment today just to, for one hour this week, begin to think about what we've talked about in this episode today, which is maybe there's an artist, maybe it's Monet or Van Gogh. Check out their artwork and begin to see how their story played out for their art. And to remember that your story has a place in your artistic journey as well and recovery. And so for one hour this week, your challenge is to begin looking for a way 
to start making art happen. Um, Brendan, what's your challenge for the audience today? Do you have anything that you would challenge them to do if they're beginning their art journey for the first time? Um, a challenge. I mean, the challenge is is just you know putting the wheels in motion. I feel like mm. that's the the hardest thing is yes. is starting. So yeah. I would just challenge you to um, set the time aside and 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 get into it um, any way you can. You know, and there's you know plenty of YouTube tutorials, all kinds of ways to yeah. to kind of start that, kick that off. But um, you know, when all these um you know, we talk about Monet and Van Gogh and all these people. And it's like, I don't think that their entire goal was to just be fame and fortune as yeah. much as doing what they love yeah. and have being able to make a career out of that. Yeah. Um, or even not make a career out of it, but just right. being able to just be creative right. and, and do what they love. So yeah. I just feel like um, authenticity is, is key to all of this is mm. just, doing something that you enjoy and and I feel mm. like if you come into art with like a clear mindset I feel like you're going to have a lot more success as to just doing it for yourself rather than for the uh, appeal of others so mm, that's good so art can be a catalyst for change and there's a lot of research in our articles that we have linked to this video um, with artistic recovery more podcasts videos and blogs like Brendan's today thank you again this was awesome to, uh, to be here and to be talking about the gift of art. Uh, it doesn't have to be something scary. It can be something that opens us up and challenges us to just get real, just get real with our story, be honest with where we've been, but where we want to go one day at a time. Uh, so for more podcast videos and blogs like today's, artisticrecovery.org, and we'll see you guys next time right back here.